Hey guys, happy Monday night in April. It is the last Monday in April, the beginning of the last week, and uh, hopefully you are enjoying uh, a relatively uh, nice evening by now. It's about 5.30, April 26th, and uh, I wanted to just share a couple of minutes to um, go over my thoughts on the timing, the time of the year that we're in. We have one week left um, before we are beginning the middle month of the second quarter, so summer's almost here. Um, but I wanted to forewarn prospective home buyers and sellers right now uh, at the possibility of just getting a little caught up or fooled or over sensationalize some of the remarkable real estate headlines that we are seeing, like the one I shared last week where Google said that when will the real estate market crash, spiking in search activity over 2,500%. Um, last month. So I wanted to cover just like some of these headlines that we're seeing, especially since we're going to be comparing this year to an important time uh, historically uh, in our in our lives, in our society, and in our real estate economy uh, that occurred one year ago. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm also sharing a couple other um, Instagram ha handles with some data. But as we look back over the course of the last year, again, don't be fooled or don't sensationalize some of these remarkable headlines that we're going to be seeing. We're going to be comparing the next couple of weeks, and for this comparison, I'm actually going to bring up my personal Instagram handle. We're going to be comparing these next couple of weeks um, as we approach May to some really strong returns and recoveries, if you will, to residential sales that occurred last year immediately following the shutdown. So last year, residential sales were off in 2020 by, on average, for the spring, 47%. Um, and but if you look at some of these uh, some of these numbers, they were they were down as much as 60, over 60% in the first couple of weeks in March and April. And it wasn't until the middle of May where 2020 sales started to then outpace and recover, finishing the year. By the way, I stopped this this uh, particular chart at Labor Day. We finished the year up about 5% year over year in terms of sales for the total year. So um, a massive uh, decline or massive uh, basically shutdown that occurred followed by some real strong growth. The other thing that occurred was, if you can see, we also had a massive shutdown in terms of listings that came onto the market in 2020 versus 2019. Listings did not recover and outpace sales by nearly the same pace that we experienced in the sale, so that so that left us in an important uh, in an important place, and again, we're coming back to a period right now uh, where we are approaching May, and we're going to see some of these numbers year over year in terms of sales look like we're blowing away the last decade, when in reality we're recovering and continuing to recover uh, in a healthy manner. So, um, as we look at the the other chart, the other uh, reality I wanted to bring to light was just understanding also what's happening in terms of pricing because we're also going to see some real strong price numbers uh, come to play in these next couple of weeks and I wanted to explain how demand is uh, or supply rather is impacting that and one of the really important components of supply and I'm pulling in our dwell uh, real estate handle here on Instagram where I recently shared this chart but we were at we are currently at 13 straight years of not building enough homes. 13 straight years of not building enough homes. For 13 years, we've been below the 50-year average of the number of newly constructed residential sales in the country. You can see we had four years back prior to the last bubble where we were building too many homes, essentially, but we're not even close to catching up with the 50 year, uh, to the 50-year average in terms of new homes being, being built. That's massively important to us in terms of uh, in terms of overall supply to meet the demand that this market is bringing us. And if you follow Instagram or my personal Facebook feed, you'll, there was a, another article that I shared last week where the chief economist from Freddie Mac had indicated that it would take almost four years worth of building, you know, worth of supply to come to market to just get current with the demand that's in the marketplace right now. So we have a long ways to go to endure what is a heavily tilted seller's market. And I just, again, want to get you guys to wrap your heads around the idea as to why, uh, how we got here, and uh, what we can expect moving forward. So 
13 years of residential sales off pace uh, and how is that going to ultimately impact pricing? That's, you know, that's the reality of, of the market that we're experiencing right now. I'm going to bring us back over to, again, my personal uh, Instagram profile and share with you uh, a chart. Actually, it's probably go faster if we do it this way. Uh, to, to share with you a look back at exactly what do these prices mean, right? So prices are jumping by double digits. In fact, prices for the first quarter you're going to see in a report soon are up well over 20% year over year. But what does that really mean? Again, not to sensationalize where we are and what's been happening these last two years, but we're basically catching up with a healthy long term. This particular chart that I just shared today goes back 21 years all the way to 2001. We can see when I've, I've plotted in the first quarter of each year for the last 21 years, you can see that we've experienced a very healthy and modest price appreciation, 5.6% per year for single family homes, 5.9% per year for condominiums, residential in Atlanta County. So again, these numbers are gonna continue to improve. We're gonna see some strong price appreciation as we continue. We can see the volume, there were more homes sold in the first quarter of 2021, more residential sales in the first quarter of 2021 than we have ever experienced historically, even back to the to the peak of the market over a decade and a half ago. But we are still not yet at peak prices, so we still have some more, so a little bit more recovery to go to get us back on track with a continued healthy appreciation. Again, nothing to be concerned about. Hopefully, this makes some sense as to where we are uh, right now and. Uh, Two things one how we got there and uh and what i think we can expect and really kind of you know interpret as we read some of these sensationalized headlines over the course of the next couple weeks hopefully you'll feel a little more confident that uh, that you're making smart decisions um any questions of course please don't hesitate to reach out i always uh strive to have the information that we provide here be the most valuable information that you are seeing uh, uh available today in our market um, have a great night and I'll see you real soon.